Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, <clears throat> this is the summary for the day of 941 for the 21st of September. But this tip is coming up a little bit late because I, um, yeah, due to, uh, I need to go out with my family and also I was having a headache just now then I, I need to take a nap then and yeah, so it became late. But uh, there is a lot of very important things that had happened and I wish that uh, to start the the twenty seconds on a new map on a new layer of map. If not, then I think you will get a bit messy, because so many important things has happened over on the twenty first, and <clears throat> we're going to go through the situation report. Before and before I start, there is still one more frontline changes. Uh, since the moment I mapped, I didn't continue mapping all the latest frontline changes. Uh, since, uh, this was before I have a headache. Um. <clears throat> so there was uh, still another geo location. Uh, this geo location of uh, Russian forces at Krutia, confirming Russian forces have actually retake retook uh, Krutia after losing it to the Ukrainians. So so this salience clearly is unsustainable. Uh, so it's already lost now, and so this is just this part of the uh, frontline changes report. <clears throat> so sorry sorry for my voice because I didn't speak for like quite a number of hours. So we're gonna go into the situation report i will try to make it snappy uh so so um yeah because there is dpa open mic to do uh, later uh, which is why you know i have a headache and i need to go and take a nap and everything so yeah this is what it is and uh we got to start off with the kursk front so at the kursk front uh the situation remains uh, largely very similar as per previous the, the strategic situation remains the same uh the the, the stalemate continues some people criticize i use the word stalemate uh, I use it the word stalemate because the Russians are actively counter-attacking. The Ukrainians are actively counter-counter-attacking. No one is making progress. If this is just any other front line, uh, I will agree uh, that you know, could, it could be just the Russians doing attrition war and whatnot. But uh, this is not the case because the counter-offensive is widely publicized and the Russian forces themselves are talking about offensive actions. They are taking offensive operation, uh, actions against the Ukrainians and uh, they are not making that much progress. So this that's the reality. The Ukrainians counter counter offensive is just as bad. And perhaps it's getting worse. Um, like, so you, Ukrainians are attacking at Kruti put, uh, not, uh, sorry, not put, and also Novi put, sorry, I, I ch keep changing his name. And uh, Mezove, uh, Medveze. Okay, whatever. So the Russians are counter-attacking or uh, shelling uh, Novi put as well. As usual, shelling reported in the rear three, three settlements, the trio, Pavlivka, Katerinivka, and Obodi, uh, Obodi. So this remains largely the same over in the Glushkovo sector. And uh, there's no change in terms of the situation around here. The The only main change is that there is no more fighting at Vesaloi, which is kind of uh, suspicious. I wonder if the Ukrainians struggled to hold positions around here and they are now stuck in a smaller position like they are now only here there's a possibility because they cannot get a foothold they gotta get, get kicked back so that is a that's one thing to take note of um and then over in the western flank that the western flank uh there is uh, the russians fight uh, counter offensive continues with fighting reporter at lubimovka um tosti look darino and nikolaivo darino uh, Ukrainian forces are counter-attacking at Lyubimovka. Somehow, there are always people keep telling me in the comments that uh, the Russians has already entered Svetikovo. I have no idea what you're talking about. I have no idea. I have never seen anything about that. Um, and this has been happening for like two days, three days. So, uh, the Russian Defense Ministry themselves are saying that they are shelling it. You know, arti air strike, artillery strike and action of the troops usually refers to F uh, drone strikes. Uh, this... There is no indication. Uh, this this report is not part of this. You no, know, carrying on offensive actions. This is not part of the offensive yet. The the front line had not reached there yet. The Ru the Russians have not even taken uh, Nizhny Klint. They are still fighting at Dorino and Nokolovo Dorino. They are stuck at Lus uh, Tosli Look and they are stuck at Lubimovka. Distance from uh, Svetikovo from the front line is eight kilometers. The closest to Dorino is around. 5.8 kilometers if you talk about ukrainian front line it's even further away we're talking about like you no know, nine kilometers it's very far away I, I i'm not sure why people keep talking about this i'm not sure what what mapping you're watching or what reporting you're hearing from uh i do not know that's not the reality here in dpa so 
Yeah, no, just deal with it. Shelling, shelling is, of, of, is reported as Vedikovo as well as Urafka. So that's all from this area of the uh, western flank. There's your location of FBV drone hitting Ukrainian troops. So Ukrainians are still in Lyubimovka. And the Russians are attacked in this for uh, are attacking in this forest region. The Russian forces are geolocated around this forest area. They landed troops, so but not sure if the Ukrainians are there at all. So that's that's all the reports from the western flank of the Kursk front. We move we move into the northern flank of the Kursk front. So at the northern flank of the Kursk front, uh, Ukrainian forces and Russian forces are clashing at Kamyshevka. So this this area is a clash. The Russians say this is a Ukrainian counter attack. Russian forces are shelling or attacking Novaya Sorochina as well as Malaya, Malaya Loknia, which is the usual thing uh, that we report every time. Kolyanko got shelled, Leonidovo got shelled. So this is then these are the other side. This is this the eastern front, no? So that's all from this area in the northern flank. Not much other actions. Uh, the lack of actions also quite suspicious. The lack of action at Kremianoe, you no know, Agovka, you no know, all this feels a bit sus to me. But uh, yeah, there is what it is. We move into the eastern flank. So yeah, let's do. Can I? Can we squeeze everything in? Yeah, I think we could. So so let's eastern southern flank. The Russian forces are attacking or shelling Martinovka, Shalmerny, Bodarevka, Komalkov. And they are also shelling or attacking at uh, Chekhaskaya, uh, Konopelka. They are actually confirming attack, attacking uh, Pekovo, shelling at uh, Malovoy as well as Guevo. So the main push is this part uh, at the Plekovo. This is the main uh, counter-offensive actions. This area here is largely you know, uh, standoff-ish. This is just you know, sh um, fire attacks. They are not really you know, um, offensive operations, at least according to the Russian Defense Ministry. There is a uh, geolocation of FPV drone strike on Ukrainians over in uh, Mernay region. So that's it from this area in the uh, eastern southern flank of the Kursk front. The shelling situation remains largely similar. There's not much, there's nothing much really to talk about. Shelling at uh, uh, Kindratifka, Kotin, Rishki, Sumi. This is the usual ones always getting shelled. Um, just off the western flank is Volodymyrivka, Volodymyrvodi. Um, this area here, of course, uh, this is just off Gordievka, which the Russians claim that they have captured. There is geolocation confirming the Russians are there. So, so the this actually confirms Russians are actually just off Gordievka. If not, they have control, full control of Gordievka. So a Russian incursion into Sumy is possible. I'm not sure if they will do that, but let's see. Uh, in the Khrushchev and region, the shelling is largely reduced. Shelly, um, Shelly Hine as well as uh, Rujeve and uh, and Lujiv, Lujiv, uh, Lujniv and uh, Khrushchev. So basically, this few shelling. So the the amount of shelling here has reduced largely. So anyway, we move into the Kharkiv front. In the Kharkiv front, uh, we have the same strategic situation. Russians attack at Lipsy. Voschans and uh, Voschansky Kotori. There's nothing special about this, so we move on. Over at the Kupians front. So at the Kupians front, uh, there's interesting development. Uh, other than the usual shouting of Kisha Rivka, there is a Russian attack over at Sinkivka, Petropolivka, and particularly Pestopova, Novosilivka, and at Kotlea Rivka. So this is this area here is the is a core interest of mine. Uh, Will they really go to make a major push in this area to flat, flatten the front line along with Vishane front all the way up to Vishana? So could this be happening? I'm not sure. So this is just the situation around at this area. This is the interesting thing uh, if you want to know. Uh, because I rep report every day. You don't necessarily watch every day. So you know, I'm just telling you what are the outstanding stuff. Over at the Vishane front, at the Vishane front, um, there is fighting reported uh, over at Kolesny Kivka and Kulia Kivka, Stemma Kivka and towards Lozova. And of significant is the situation over at Kulia Kivka, where the Russian forces have actually uh, come to merely less than, uh, I think, 3 kilometers, less than 2 kilometers. Okay, less than 2 kilometers. They are around 1.5 kilometers away from the settlement of Kulia Kivka. And uh, this, this advance by the Russians is going to be uh, one hop away and they can actually launch attack. Uh, because two less than two kilometers is very near, and and the, there's a major crossing between Kulia Kivka and uh, and Senkove. So this crossing will be vital. So this attack is coming soon, and this is going to change everything over in this area of the 
of the Oscu fronts, you know, to the Kupians front, the Prishani fronts, Fedway fronts, the front line here is going to massively change. So this is very, very important. Uh, over in the Fedway front, at the Fedway front, uh, we have uh, quite a number of major uh, developments. So first thing first, I want to talk about uh, that's fighting at Vishneve uh, because this is going to be off the, uh, never mind, just, okay, the northern part. And uh, Novoyhorivka, Shanekina, Towards the Jews, there's Bifka, and uh, there's some shelling or attacks over at Izumske. So probably this is just shelling. I, I used the wrong icon. So, so that's area in the in the northern part of the Sviatove front, which is over here, Sviatove. And um, we move further south, there's some major developments. So uh, fighting at Ripple at Krakivka, this is Jews, Bifka, Makievka, and at Nevske. And there's this massive frontline change over at Nevske, which I did mention in the frontline changes report. The... The most part between Makievka and the, ne the southern part of Nevsky is just a Russian claim. This is not guaranteed Russian control. The main captured one is this one, which is based this con this is confirmed by Joe location. This area here is confirmed by Joe location. So this is the area that's confirmed Russian capture. The north of this is just a Russian claim. So don't take it with a massive pinch of salt, because their theory is that uh, there is. Based on the developments between Makievka and Nevsky, then there, there can possibly be Ukrainian forces here. I find that uh, ridiculous um, because of there is still crossings, river crossings here. So anyway, uh, that's what is reported. Over in the Kremina front, uh, we have fighting this Kremina, by the way. There's fighting reported at Novo Sadove, Terni, Bilhorivka again, or maybe it's that one below, I'm not sure. The uh, Torske, and now uh, this is the current situation over at Kremina. As long as they say it's Liman sector, I'm going to put this Bilhorivka because, um, yeah, this Bilhorivka should be part of the Sivas area. So I'm not sure, no, yeah, why is it named that way? At the Sivas front, there is fighting or shelling reported at Sirvianka. Bakomokayamsky under attack, there is attack on Sivas at Vimka. Vimka is reported by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. It's Russian Defense Ministry mentioned Sivas. So, you know, take your pick. The, you can see this Ukrainian and then this Russian. So that's it. Over at the Bakhmut front, in the northern flank of the Bakhmut front, Ukrainian uh, forces, a uh, Ukrainian mapping claim that they have retaken the area that was lost to the Russians at Zelenyansky. Russian forces attack at Kalin uh, Kalinina, towards Maiske and Chasifia. Maiske is reported by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. So there is some kind of development around this area here from Khorkhorivka, Kal uh, Kalinina, towards Maiske, which is not on the map. So this is something to take note of. Um, so you can see. The front line is actually here. So but they mentioned Maiske. So there must be some kind of attack coming from Khorivka region. So uh, over in the uh, southern flank, we have fighting reported towards Petashne over here. Ru uh, Russian defense, uh, Russian forces uh, seemingly retaken this gray zone on the Ukrainian map. Russian forces attack at Indriyevka and towards Bilahora, which is over here. So that's it from the southern flank. Uh, this is pretty typical by now. Uh, this has always been like this for the past, past, uh, past few days. Over the New York front, and the New York front, the concentration, concentration of fighting is around Torres and New York. If we zoom in, we're going to see a little bit more. So, Russian forces attacking uh, at Pivnichny, Torex, towards Kibinivka, Nelipivka, and there is no attacks being reported at Leonidivka, but Russian forces is geolocated over there. This is something to talk about. I will talk a little bit there. But first thing first, Russian forces have captured Pivnishne for real. Uh, this comes after the Ukrainian mapping fully announced, uh, uh, fully fully show that the, the rest of the Dacha region is now under Russian control. This confirmed Russian capture of the entirety of Pivnishne, which is quite a big achievement because it is a pretty big settlement. So, Russian forces continue to penetrate into the center of Torex. Joe location of Russian airstrike hitting Ukrainian uh, coal mine. And um, so, this, this incursion continues and it looks, looks like it's pretty unstoppable at this moment because the Russians keep moving in uh, you know, almost daily. There's always advancement. So, let's see whether the Ukrainians can do anything about it. But the situation is getting bad because Russian forces geolocated within Leonidivka is quite of somewhat of a ridiculous situation right now. And uh, there is still fighting being reported in Nelipivka, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry and Skabinivka. So, so, you, so we have to talk about this. Ukrainians say that there is fighting. Ukrainian Defense Ministry said that there is fighting at Skabinivka and Nelipivka. So, where is the front line? 
I was I was imagine it's something like this. But yet Russian forces is at Leonidivka. So what? The front line now is like this. Then could this be a pincer? Uh but I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure what the situation. Why they keep saying Skibinivka? No, I'm, I'm, I I can't tell. Why that's the case? There is no fighting being reported at Leonidivka. The last one was on the fifth. It's also by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. So the situation is unclear at this moment. And uh, maybe the next uh, report that is already published today, uh, maybe those have it. I don't. I'm not sure. I'm just asking question based on the, whatever I have on the map. And another situation is developing is that the Russians are pushing over in Torex. They are pushing in this direction. The Russians are pushing here. Then this also becomes a problem, right? So I'm not so the front line here is definitely unclean. We don't have the real situation here over in the New York front. So we will continue to monitor the situation. Over in the northern flank of the uh, Pokrov front, fighting report at Vostivizenka, shelling, uh, there is dual location of Russian forces at Novo Alexandrovka. Alexandrovka is a Ukrainian uh, dragon drone attack. Russian forces attacking at Novo Toretsky. So that's that's about it. Pretty minimal. Over in the Hrodivka, Novo Hrodivka direction, the Russian forces are attacking in the Hrodivka region. Dual location of Russian forces confirming their locations in the western part of Hrodivka. Now fighting is moving into uh, Krasnia and Krutia with the latest dual location as mentioned. Russia now uh, closing close the salient that the Ukrainian managed to break out from. Fighting is also reported in the Novo Hrodivka region. So this continues to be uh, the Russians trying to consolidate their position because without Krasnia, Krutia, Mikolaivka, uh, this area is com completely un uh, unstable for the Russians. They have to take all these places in order to have a strong you know, base to fight the second boss, which is the Minograd. So anyway, we will continue to monitor this area. And moving south to the Selidove region, there's fighting reported at Marinivka towards Selidove and Mikhailivka. So that's about it. We move further south into the Hernik region. The fighting is now moving into Hernik. Uh, fighting is now reported at Hernik uh, since the first time since the 17th of September. So the fighting is now moving into Hernik now. There's still fighting reported as uh, Zalane Pershi, which is weird. There's fighting reported at Ukraine and Sukarine. So geolocation of Ukrainian uh, forces, the U there's a Ukrainian uh, forces getting hit, there's a column getting hit. Just, just right on the front line uh, where we have drawn it. So that doesn't change our front line. So the, the this this big arrow movement south is currently happening. So we will continue to see how this develop. Over in the, uh, I would say, what, what shall we call this? Kurakove region. I can even call this its own front line by now. You know, like Hernik is its own sector, this Kurakove sector. Because this front line is now moved massively. Russian forces have attacked in the flanking, south flanking operation and captured the prison on the western part of Kostre. Russian forces continue to push. And this, this comes after the Ukrainians uh, updated the map. I have, I have shown it on the frontline changes report. So I'm not going to repeat it again. So Russian forces close up the entire area here in the north of Georgivka. Russian for forces fully con uh, consolidating positions in the west of Krasnohorevka. This is a massive, massive thing. Imagine, I can still remember the time I'm still reporting when the front line is still outside of Krasnohorevka. The Russians are just starting to try to push Krasnohorevka. A lot of people dying in the, pro in the process to try to attack the southern flank. Now we are talking about fighting way past Krasnohorevka. So you no know, time flies. Fighting is reported at Maximilianivka as well. The so that's the current uh, situation. It's really, really bad. This uh so and that's Shaling report at Krakove. The situation is now looking like a massive lizard. Like this is the lizard mouth. And then it, the tongue is coming out. So yeah, it should be green it should be green in color, you know. It's a lizard. Yeah, it's now looking like this. No, and this is now heading towards Ostrivsky. This is where the this iguana lizard trying to eat. It's trying to eat its Ostrivsky. So it's getting very scary. So uh, over in the uh, Voleda, okay, let's Voleda Konstantinivka region, Russian forces are attacking Konstantinivka to Skaterinivka, Evodiane region, and Voleda. Nothing special, you no. Know, generally speaking. Uh, there's some slight frontline changes of Russian claiming the roads. 
not very important. And then we have this massive uh, situation over in the Velika Novosilka region, rather on the east. So let's call this the Ukraine Novo Ukrainka region. Russian forces are attacking a Zolota Neva. Still, they have not captured it. Joe location of FPV drone hitting a Ukrainian tank, showing that the Ukrainians are not willing to let Zolota Neva fall. As I did mention before, Zolota Neva falling will cause massive strategical problems for the Ukrainians. But the Russians are still moving forward as well. They are now fighting in the east of Pashastivka, capturing some grounds, uh, consolidating their position uh, in the north of the highway, and now pushing towards uh, Novo Ukrainka. So this is reported by the Russian Defense Ministry as they are pushing forward. So this is particularly uh, problematic for the Ukrainians. Uh, it's a long front line. Uh, the front line from end to end is around 16 kilometers. It's a huge front line for the Ukrainians to hold. So let's see how the Ukrainians are going to deal with this. In the Veliko Novosilka sector, there is fighting reported towards Novo Darivka, and there's possible shelling or attacks towards Veliko Novosilka. So, uh, so then there is also geolocation location of Russian forces attacking Makarivka, but no reports was be being reported. There was only mentioned as a, there is only a geolocation location of a U of a Russian attack. So that's it from the Velika Novo Silka. Uh, uh was attacked again. Uh, this is according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry, probably coming from Mafopil direction, but we shall see. You no, know, waiting for more information. And the rest of the Zaporizhia front, we have fighting reported, you no, know, quite a number of places again. Fighting at uh, Robotine towards Novo Danilevka, Novo Andreevka, Nestrianka, uh, Patekaki, and Kayamske. So, yeah, it's getting bigger, right? I did mention in the yesterday's survey, it's getting more and more, you no, know, like it was getting more and more solid as an offensive. Like, you no, know, I, I just want to, just want to be positive a bit because. Because this can go on forever and no frontline change. So uh, over in the Kherson region, there is only shelling reported and Tanivka, and that's about it. So anyway, thank you for watching. This is the situation report or the summary for the day of 941 for the 20, 21st of September. Sorry for the late report. If you find this really less, um, I'm sorry. Um, uh, but no, I have a life and I'm yeah not well because I'm, I burned out myself too much. Yeah. So anyway, thank you for watching. Check out the DBA Open Mic. It's happening right now, I believe, if you are watching this. And I'll see you guys in the next update.